How are you doing? This is David W. Williams. So what we're going to talk about today is the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, how it's blown up and what we can kind of learn from this particular situation, because I think the most important thing is what you can learn from it, uh, as opposed to be kind of upset what happened in the past. And so really quickly, let's let me give you some groundwork on what's going on, kind of tap you into what the latest information is. And we're also going to watch a video from the number one investor, the person that put the largest amount as a singular person inside the particular fund. And what has been some of the actions that they think they need to take to try to resolve this situation? So what we found out, let's say maybe about a week and a half ago, was that the Tulsa Real Estate Fund is going out of business. Uh, Jay does a call in which he speaks to a certain amount of people that actually can get on the call. And he claimed that he was going to liquidate the fund. Um, and in my opinion, that this is probably been a long time coming because we kind of reason that the fund most likely my mic is echoing okay we kind of reason that the fund most likely was going to be insolvent and as a result they will probably liquidate the fund cash out what they could cash out and then move forward so it kind of looks like we're at that particular stage of the game now and where does it leave the initial investors in this particular deal? And is this an action that they approve of or something they just can't do anything about? We also found out that the Black House, which is like a multi-purpose building in Atlanta, is being sold. So I believe this was bought in cash. I believe from my understanding is that Jay refied it. He you know, refied it, what he could get out of it. And now, from my understanding, it's been put on the market. And I don't know what they're going to be able to sell it for in this particular market because we see that commercial real estate builders are taking a really big haircut right now in this market. However, it looks as if Morrison is trying to cash this out to get what he can get for it because they were never able to really turn this into a really lucrative, multi-purpose building. Um, but I think that the, the idea wasn't bad. I just think it probably wasn't operated properly. Because the this type of space in Atlanta is very competitive and a lot of it is location based. I'm not sure based on where they're at that there's a really good market for the kind of like multi-purpose. I forgot what the particular name is. It's kind of like the same angle that we work was taking to try to do that in that particular area. But this space in Atlanta is very, very, very competitive. And then therefore, you got to kind of have a really good operating team to make this work right so we're seeing that there's an effort now to liquidate everything pull all the money that they can pull out of the situation um and then to keep moving forward okay and so the question you want to kind of ask yourself is that how do they get here and in the future what can be done to make sure that this doesn't happen again so what i want to do is listen to this really quick video from a guy named julian gordon who's kind of known in the real estate space kind of online He's been moving around a little bit and he wants the investors in the Tulsa to take certain actions because I have some feedback on that and about whether or not you believe as a person that's kind of savvy in the financial markets that these actions that he's anticipating are requesting that people take are actually going to be effective to get to a particular goal. Because the question you want to kind of ask yourself is what where we're currently at right now. What else can be done except walk away from the situation? So Mr. Gordon has some suggestions about what he thinks can be done, but that's kind of the question you want to kind of ask yourself. If you're in the situation of these investors, because let me explain something to you. You could be invested in a equity deal and have something very similar happen to you. Just because it happened to them doesn't mean it, it won't happen to you unless you just buy the index and don't buy anything else. It's the only time it can't happen to you if you just buy the index. If you buy anything outside of the index, if you buy any individual stock, the same situation that they're placed in can happen to you because any company can go under for any reason. It's something that we call business risk in, in investing and also in business. So you want to ask yourself, if I was in this situation, what would I do? Therefore, if you get in this situation, you kind of have a game plan of how you want to proceed. So should they just walk away and just kind of write it off? To me, it's a sunk cost. At this point, it has to be a sunk cost from an accounting standpoint. Or do they try to get some type of resolution from this situation? And what resolution can be gained from the situation is what you want to kind of ask yourself. Or are you just spinning your wheels for like some emotional satisfaction? 
often in life, we can be faced with something and we do something because we think it's going to make us feel better, which is a result, right? That feeling better is a tangible result, um, but it's really nothing past that. It just makes you feel better. Sometimes you got to kind of watch yourself when you're engaged in that kind of behavior. It's doing things just because how it's going to make you feel as opposed to actually being able to get a tangible result at the end of the day, even though an emotional result is a tangible result. People got to understand it. It's very, very powerful. In fact, an emotional result can be more powerful than having something that you can put your hands on. But what we're going to go into is this video by Julian Gordon in which he speaks about this situation because he's been very adamant and very uh, vocal about how he was displeased with how things have gone and what you think um, also what I think is maybe the efficacy or the effectiveness of what he suggested. Right. So let me go ahead and bring that video up and let's get straight to it. Dear Tulsa Real Estate Fund investors, it is with a heavy heart that I must inform you of the imminent closure of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, also known as TRAF. Today, the Legacy Center, which is also known as the Black House, was listed for sale. This is the fulcrum that Jay Morrison has been avoiding because it solidifies the sinking of the TRAF Titanic, an embarrassing performance of the fund and him as its sole manager. Despite our collective hopes and efforts, the fund's financial situation has deteriorated to a point where liquidation is the only viable option. As the lead investor with $40,000 at stake and a fellow real estate developer, I've been closely monitoring the situation and conducting extensive research into the fund's operations, which can all be found at www.tulsarealestatefraud.com. That's tulsarealestatefraud.com. Over the past year, I've made numerous attempts to communicate privately with Jay Morrison, the fund's manager, to address concerns and seek clarity on the fund's status long before it got to this point. However, my requests for meetings were repeatedly ignored, leaving me with no choice but to share my findings publicly to ensure that all 15,000 investors worldwide are informed about the actions of the fund's management. Based on the limited information available from the fund's outdated SEC filings and a recent investor call on April 2nd, 2024, it has become apparent that Jay Morrison is proceeding with the liquidation of the fund. The decision is a direct result of the fund's near bankruptcy status, driven by mismanagement, excessive operating costs, and questionable investment practices. Okay, so the first question you want to ask yourself is that, is any of that illegal? So mismanagement, questionable, and I forgot what the third thing he says, is any of that illegal? Is it, is it illegal to mismanage a fund? People do it every day, right? So then the question is, if he did mismanage it because he's incompetent, right, in this particular capacity, um, and if he's shown to be incompetent, what's, what is illegal about that? Like, what can you really do about it? So if you find out over time that your fund manager is really actually incompetent, what can you do about it, right? So that's kind of the question you want to kind of ask yourself. So let's keep going. At his last State of the Union address on August 11, 2023, the fund only had $575,531 in cash, which has likely been depleted by now. The Legacy Center, a.k.a. the Black House, which was owned in cash for a better part of the six years, was refinanced which allowed Jay Morrison to extract another $1.5 million from the fund to cover significant operating losses and his sizable management fee. As investors, we must confront the harsh reality of this situation. The probability of recovering our investment capital is exceedingly low, and the fund's remaining assets are insufficient to cover its liabilities. The most egregious violation appears to be the purchase of Jay Morrison's personal residence using the fund's money through an anonymous LLC, as well as a one-sided agreement for the adjacent 27 acres of land, which he will personally own and retain for his family when the fund shuts down and cannot act on the fund's right to develop on that land. While the TREF subscription agreement granted Jay Morrison significant control over the fund's operations, it doesn't absolve him of his fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the investors. The okay, so the question I would, and I, I would never be able to get Mr. Gordon on the show. What about 
he's an experienced real estate investor. What about this deal made sense where you gave so much power to the fund manager and there was really no oversight in his activity? Like, what about this deal in your mindset is worth $40,000? And you're an experienced person. See, the people that don't know anything about investing, um, you can't really hold their feet to the fire because they're newbies. And in investing, you're going to make mistakes. That's just how the game plays. You got to kind of learn where to put your money, yada, yada, yada. But the question you want to ask, Mr. Gordon, is that you're an experienced person. In fact, you teach in this space, right? You're an instructor in this space. I'm not saying people can't make mistakes. However, what about this deal? There's really a much better question, but I want to ask somebody if they come on live that question. So I don't want to get the, the, hat, the cat out of the bag yet. But what about the deal was worth 40 grand when you knew from the onset that Jay had this much power over the fund? So then he could always be allowed to do what he's done because of how the particular deal was constructed. I don't understand what about that was worth 40,000 because you could put 40,000 anywhere. So why put 40,000 here as opposed to buying treasuries for 40,000 and there's no risk. You're going to lose your money. So this is what I'm trying to get people to understand is that when you actually are savvy in the markets, you know what kind of questions to ask yourself. So you don't get somewhere and be like, well, this didn't go the way I wanted to go. The question you want to ask yourself is why I took this action in the first place. Let's get back to it. Evidence we have compiled strongly suggests that he has violated this duty through self-dealing, misappropriation of funds, and gross negligence. To address these issues, we have filed numerous complaints, hundreds of complaints, with the SEC or Securities and Exchange Commission and the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. However, the lack of transparency from these agencies has left us uncertain as to whether our concerns are being properly investigated. The DA's office in particular is currently preoccupied with very high profile cases, which may delay any action on our behalf. OK, so submitting complaints to the. SEC and the DA, a question again, the DA deals with criminal cases. What about this situation is criminal? Right. The SEC would deal with something the way there's some type of impropriety in which um, he managed the fund. And it, it was something that they could find that he violated some type of securities regulation. Again, though, what about what he did? Did he violate some type of security regulation? Right. And so that's kind of what you want to ask yourself is that why would you go to the D? And I'm, I don't want to say this now, but I'm going to go and just say it because we get out of the way because I don't want to forget it. From my understanding, Mr. Gordon is a. Uh, financially well off or in a better place financially than the majority of people that invested in this fund. My counsel would be get with an attorney in Atlanta, right? And have the attorney look at all your information and determine with the attorney, if anything that they believe that Mr. Morrison has done, you can find people that are experts in real estate, like real estate attorneys, contract attorneys, anything that maybe he's done that we believe to be illegal. Then you present that to the DA. But again, what did he do that you believe to be illegal? You know, we can use all the words we want to use, but what was illegal about what he did? What do we believe that he did is illegal? Because the D only deals with criminal cases. Right. So that's kind of the question is that they only deal with criminal cases. What did, you may be able to take him to civil court, but what did he do that was illegal? So if you don't find anything that he did that was criminal. Why are you going to the DA? You're wasting the DA's time. And, you know, they about what they about. So let's keep going. In terms of our next steps as investors, many people want to do a class action lawsuit. But class action lawsuits are primarily for going up against big companies that have a lot of assets to draw from on their balance sheet. In this instance, family, there are very few assets to recoup in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. So that would be a waste of time. In light of this, I believe that our best course of action is to mobilize our collective voice and draw attention to our plight. I'm urging all TREF investors to record short videos sharing their stories and experiences with the fund. By posting these videos on social media and tagging the Fulton County DA's office, which is at Fulton County DA, we can put a human face to the thousands of individuals who have been negatively impacted by the situation. If you're willing to join in this effort, please structure your one to two minute video as follows. 
One, state your name, city, and profession. Two, share how much you invested. Three, explain why you chose to invest in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Four, express your feelings about the fund's collapse amidst one of the greatest real estate booms in history and how your money was used to purchase Jay Morrison's personal residence and the surrounding 27 acres, as well as to line his pockets through management fees and questionable deals with his other companies. And a five, clearly state what actions you would like the authorities, the SEC or DA to take, given that the fund remains very little assets to recoup. I'll pause for a second so you can take a screenshot of this. And I encourage you to record your video as soon as this presentation is over while it is top of mind. OK, so let's let's go back to that real quick, because I want to want to show you that. So you can OK, so we got the pause on. OK, so again, you're going to give a, a video to the D.A. Name, city, profession, how much you invested in the fund, why you chose to invest in the fund, express your feelings about the funds collapsed. Right. Um, and how Jay used the personal res he used the money to get his personal residence in the surrounding 27 acres. And then state what you would like the authorities, SEC or DA to take, given the lack of remaining assets to recoup and then post it on Fulton County DA. OK, again, I'm not sure what that will accomplish. Right. I'm not sure what that will accomplish. And so one thing I'm sensitive about. And it got nothing to do. It's not a critique of Mr. Um, Gordon. I don't have any issue with this guy. I don't know him. I haven't heard anything negative about him ever. Right. To be real with you. I just am sensitive about when we tell our people, in my opinion, to do things that won't necessarily bring about a real world result that they're looking for. So it's kind of like an activity to focus your emotion on at this point. However, when you get done with it, you're going to be in the exact same situation you are. Now, again, I said an emotional result is a tangible result. So if it makes you feel better then do it. Right. However. What is that really what you're looking to get? Are you looking to just feel better? Or are you actually looking to get a real economic result? Because if you're looking to get an economic result, I'm not sure how this accomplishes it. And so one of the ways in which I believe we've been negatively programmed is we get involved in things that bring you. We're looking to get a result that's non-emotional or a result that is a combination of emotional um, and other things. But people just go after just the emotional result because they really believe that's all they're ever going to get. Right. And so that's what I'm not a fan of is building out this big Facebook group, bringing all the people in that feel like the fund did them wrong. Let's do this activity. And then after that, now what are we going to do? So I've seen one of the videos from one of the people that kind of tried to follow the instructions, even though they really didn't follow the instructions that they were given. And I couldn't even watch the whole video because there was so much going on. Instead of following the instructions, I could never get to what they were actually talking about. And again, the DA is not going to listen to all that. Right. So you got to kind of understand is that. I just think it's very, very unfortunate because once again, in my opinion, people are not being given the right instructions to get what they want to get. And I'm not saying this to be argumentative. I'm not saying this to be uh, contradictory to what he's saying. It's just I don't understand what is this going to accomplish, except I may just feel better because I express it. I'm not I'm not dis downplaying that that can be very powerful to people to just feel better by saying something. So now they can get it off their chest. And maybe they not can get closure and move on. And that may be the whole goal of this particular exercise. So I may just be missing it. Right. But if that's not, then what are we supposed to do after that? After everybody makes these videos, now what? And so that's what I really don't understand. And that's kind of why I decided to do this video, because I saw this and I was like, okay, I don't really get why they're doing this. But I know on the Internet, what is really blown up, because I grew up, I'm a, I grew up in the era of talk radio. And what made talk radio so big was everybody got to say their take if they could actually get on the live. Because historically, all media channels was locked out to the average person. So I just kind of think we're in this era where people feel like their voice needs to be heard on every issue if they think they have something to say. And then now what we do is we encourage people to just say anything, even sometimes that what they're saying won't necessarily get a real result. But let's keep going. Can take a screenshot of this and i encourage you to record your video as soon as this presentation is over while it is top of mind 
The more stories we tell, the harder it is for them to ignore us, and the more likely it is that an investigation will take place and justice will be served. It is crucial to emphasize that this is not a personal vendetta against Jay Morrison, but rather an attempt to hold him accountable for his actions as the fund manager. To whom much is given, much is required. We entrusted him with our hard earned money and he had a responsibility to manage it with integrity and professionalism. Unfortunately, the evidence suggests that he has failed in this regards and we are now forced to bear the consequences. To my fellow investors, I understand your pain, anger and frustration you may be experiencing right here, right now in this moment. It is easy to second guess our decision to invest in the fund, but we must remember that we believe in a vision of group economics and community development that was greater than one individual. We could not have foreseen the level of mismanagement and deception that would occur. As we navigate this difficult time together, I encourage you to focus on your own well-being and financial recovery. Do not allow this setback to define or deter you from pursuing your dreams and investing in the future. We must learn from this experience and use it to become better stewards of our resources and advocates of our community. To those who have remained silent, yes, you know who you are, or enabled Jay Morrison's behavior, I implore you to come forward and share what you know. This is not about personal gain or vengeance, but about ensuring that justice is served and that others are not victimized in the future, especially by Jay Morrison. Remember, when Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme collapsed, five other individuals were convicted with him for their involvement. We know who you are, LT, MF, JP, MM, TO, TB, and last but not least, EJ. Your names appear on the fund's website in addition to the SEC filings, and you are in photographs and videos. I urge you to come forward with what you know and clear your name before any potential investigations commence. And so, and so again, without stating that you believe that something illegal has taken place, to me, this is just drama, right? To say, to talk about what? So I'm going to come forward and talk about what? Something that wasn't illegal? Like, it don't make no sense. But I know this is good on the internet because it gives people something to talk about. You know, we can go back to high school, yada, yada, yada. But to me, if I can't state that I allege that this guy did something illegal, then there is nothing to talk about. So I just, like I said, is I don't understand what the goal is, but I do know that people are looking for leadership in most situations. So if you just come out and do something, it's better than doing nothing, right? Because the people are looking for leadership. So I, I'm not against what he's doing. Like I said, is I don't understand the effectiveness of it, but let's keep going. But everybody does, everybody leads differently, right? So everybody's, uh, I would say, leadership style is going to be different. So, you know, you got to always take that into regard. EJ. Jay Morrison's wife in particular, we call upon you to provide proof of payment for the 50 plus hours you spent using the funds podcasting studio to record your It's Negotiable podcast. With the going rate for studio time in Atlanta at about $75 per hour or more, we demand transparency on whether you have been using the space for free. The money is negligible. But if there is no evidence of payment, it further highlights Jay Morrison's lack of integrity and effort to make the fund successful. The people deserve answers. In this manner, is non-negotiable. It is bitter irony that the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, named after the tragic destruction of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, by a white mob, has been burned down from within by a Black man who exploited the legacy and resilience of our ancestors for his own personal gain. This is a painful reminder that we must remain vigilant in protecting our communities from those who seek to take advantage of our trust and aspirations. Unfortunately, all skin folk are not kin folk. To the investors who may be experiencing feelings of shame or embarrassment, I want to ensure you that you are not alone and you are not to blame. It is natural for your friends, family, and followers to question your judgment and in the wake of this crisis but I urge all of them to refrain from saying things like, I told you so, or attacking your intelligence. We made a good faith investment in what we believe to be a promising opportunity for our community. The fault lies with those who abuse our trust, not with us for having faith in the potential for collective economic empowerment. Okay, and again, so, and again, I don't, I don't blame the, the actual regular investors 
I look at the guy that has experience in the space, right? And I ask him again, what about this deal was worth $40,000 of your money? You know, the individual people that put in 50,000, I'm sorry, put in 500 here and there, they, they don't, they may not even know how to evaluate an investment, right? It don't mean they're not responsible for their behavior, but they're not as experienced. This guy probably is an accredited investor, right? And so that's my thing is that what about this deal attracted your 40,000, right? Because I don't believe that it's in between an investment and a donation. So if we say, hey, you know what? I like this situation and I'm just going to donate to it and whatever happens, happens. That's not the same as an investment because with an investment, you're seeking return. You're supposed to have parameters around your return. You're supposed to have a time horizon. You're supposed to have an exit, whether you take a loss or right, whether you hit a profit. So he he's, he's experienced really in investing in illiquid assets, which is real estate. Real estate is considered illiquid because it's going to be very hard for you to liquidate it if you need to. He's experienced in this space. So what about the deal made sense? So I'm not saying to the regular people, you know, you did the crazy something. I just still want to know from you what made sense for you to give it 40,000, not 4,000, but 40,000. Right. So he led the investment right with his money. And so then we still can never get that. So it's, it's kind of to me a lot after the fact where if you're teaching people how to do this, what are you teaching them? How are you teaching to, to them to evaluate an investment on the onset, not after the fact? If you're a teacher in this particular space. Because we sat on this channel and read the documentation multiple times. It's not as if Jay got brand new on them six months into the deal. Pretty much the majority of what Jay did, he did it because the deal said he could do it. Right. So that's kind of the question you want to kind of ask yourself. Let's keep going. We invested in the right asset class, which is real estate, with the wrong asset manager. I'll repeat that. We invested in the right asset class with the wrong asset manager. $11.7 million could have and should have been leveraged into at least a $40 million real estate portfolio after six years. Unfortunately, this particular fund has went bust in the midst of one of real estate's greatest booms. As we move forward, I want to express my deepest gratitude to those who have supported me throughout this ordeal. Your encouragement and solidarity have been a source of strength and motivation for me. I also want to thank the whistleblowers, the investors, non-investors, insiders, influencers, and private investigators who have come forward with information and evidence. Your courage and commitment to the truth are commendable and will not be forgotten. Most importantly, I want to thank all of the TREF investors for their belief in the power of collective action and group economics. Though we have suffered a setback, I believe that our resilience and determination will carry us through this difficult time. We must not allow this experience to dampen our spirits or our resolve to build a better future for ourselves, our children, and our community at large. I urge you to record your videos and share them widely. Let your voices be heard and let us hold those responsible for this travesty accountable. Together, we can ensure that the lessons of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund are never forgotten and that we emerge stronger, wiser, and more unified than ever before. In closing, I call upon Jay Morrison to face the investors he has wronged, even if he manages to evade legal consequences. He owes us an explanation and an apology for his actions. There okay, he don't owe you anything because it's not in the contract. So the contract doesn't state if the fund goes, it tanks or it goes under, I owe you something. He don't owe you anything. He owes what the contract states he owes, right? And so I just, again, we have to raise our level of sophistication in certain areas. Again, this is one of my pet peeves is we have situations that go wrong and people come to us and say, Here's how we're going to solve it. But they're not really giving us a real solution to where we don't end back here again. Right. Telling a fund manager that they need to give you an explanation of why the fund went under. Um, if it's not in the contract, he don't have to do it because he only got to do what's in the contract. So, again, but like I said before, getting an emotional result is a very powerful result. So if that's what people want. They want the Oprah Winfrey show with Jay Morrison. But he's already done a tour online 
explaining what went wrong in the fund. So he's already done that already. So I don't know why you want to get more of that, but you know, it is what it is. Let's keep going. There were only 53 out of 15,000 TREF investors on the April 2nd investor call because the fund's communications and notifications have been sparse or non-existent. This is a public fund and therefore warrants a public explanation and must be able to bear public scrutiny. Therefore, I challenge you, Jay Morrison, to emerge from hiding behind the camera, stand before the people in public, just like your corner classes, and account for your failures as the fund manager face to face with the people. Only by confronting the truth and accepting responsibility can we hope to heal the wounds inflicted upon our community by you. Okay, so he already did this. And then nobody, none of y'all didn't show up. So he already did this. He did a he did a situation at the Black House where he stood up there, it was live streamed, and he took questions. And all the people that online had so much critique, we just saw they was just online. Why would he do that again? It don't make no sense. Right? He's already done this. Right. And that's what I want you to understand is that he's done of I'm going to explain. And he kind of said to where, you know, essentially he's incompetent in this particular area. Right. That's pretty much was the result of the live stream that he did in this area. He's been proven to be incompetent, but he never proved his competency in this area, which is what people don't understand. Right. He never proved his competency to do commercial real estate. He never, nobody can ever show where he showed he could do it. Like I came on here and I was telling people about trading, but I, I, I already showed I could trade before I tried to tell somebody else about it. Then I continued to show I could trade before, as I'm continuing to tell the people about trading, I still showed I could trade. Then I produce other people that can trade that came out of my program while I'm still talking about trading. I didn't just pop up out of nowhere and start talking about this stuff and don't have no proof to show I can do it. And then I can produce other people that can do it. So that's kind of what I want people to understand is that. When you kind of don't understand, we talked about before, you don't have a level, of, a level of sophistication about certain areas. You don't even understand what questions you're supposed to ask about it. And you always ask the wrong questions. And I see a lot of it on the Internet. The question the person is asking is 100 percent the wrong question to ask in this situation. Um, it's like, you know, somebody buys a gun and asks, you know, what what end of the gun does a bullet come out of? You don't have no business being inside a gun store if you don't know that. You know, you got to come in knowing certain stuff. Let's keep going. Let us use this moment as a catalyst for change, learning and growth. May we never forget the hard lessons learned from the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. And may we always strive to uplift and empower one another in the face of adversity. Together, we will rise above this challenge and build a brighter, more equitable future for all. I wish you all strength, wisdom, and perseverance to overcome this obstacle and emerge victorious. Thank you. Okay, so that's the video he put out. And I have some stuff I believe that he's really trying to do on the back end, but I'm not going to get into that because that would be purely speculation. And I don't want to make the man feel like um, I'm trying to attack his character, right? Because I don't know him as a person. But like I said, I never heard nothing negative about the guy. OK, um, so the question you want to ask and so really quickly, if you have any. Comments, disagreements, anything that you want to talk about, because we talked about this particular situation on this platform multiple times. In fact, I was one of the first channels and I don't like to do the first thing on YouTube, but I would say that we were very early on this particular story. Um, because I knew a lot of savvy real estate people when this thing came out. So I knew by the hood, Jimmy been doing real estate since the 90s. Right. And Jimmy's not 60 years old. He's been doing real estate in the 90s. Right. So he got almost a 30 something year track record in the real estate game. Right. That guy's done a lot of properties. Camp does a lot of properties. Um, I know another guy named Jay Johnson out of Mizzou. He's done a lot of the real estate space. And so they were talking about this. And they kind of got me to understand why they weren't for it. And then I said, I started going through the documentation and I kind of realized how it was set up. And I wasn't going to invest in it anyway, but it wasn't attractive to me by the way in which the deal was composed. And again, what competency did he have in that area? Right. What was his competency in that area? You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And so we it was kind of like even if everything let's say everything was on the on the table. You're asking somebody that has no experience in the space. 
to do something they've never done before, which don't mean they can't do it. It just means that you have to have the ability to lose what you put in for this person to learn how to do it. And I really think that's what this was. This was a way for Jay to learn how to do this. And it just didn't go the way people thought. And one of the downsides of that, when you can't lose it, is you look to blame the person. But maybe he just wasn't the right person for this deal because he just didn't have enough experience and he was going to have to churn money to learn how to do it. And when you really don't understand investing, I'm going to show you a company. So I'm going to talk about this next week. There's a company called Sweet Green, right? They're like an eatery company. They're kind of not, they're not like uh, Chipotle. They're not like Cava. They're kind of like in the middle. And you know what they're doing? They're burning money and they're burning money and they're burning money and they're burning money. And I'm getting ready to, I'm going to tell people that they're probably getting ready to do an offer. So you don't invest in Sweet Green. If you don't understand that they're just going to keep burning money until they figure out how not to burn money. Right. And so I think that's what the lack of sophistication is that that's why the federal government does have something called accredited investors. But Obama created a plan for you not to have to be an accredited investor to get into this crowd fund, which is what it was. Which it's not a public fund. It's a crowd fund. It's not public. It's really private. Right. So these are some of the dangers that people will say, well, we shouldn't let people do this because this is what happens. And they don't even understand what took place. I don't agree, but that's just me. Okay, so we're going to let in Miss Michelle. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Can you hear me? Is my background yes, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Diamond Dave. I appreciate you having me on the podcast. I invested in um, social real estate fund in an amount of $1,500 total. $500 okay. in doing the initial back in 2018. Then he, during the pandemic, um, because I had saved money because I wasn't, because I was working from home mostly. So I wasn't commuting. So I had about another 500. And then with the, um, pandemic money, I was able to give him another thousand. I said, you know, I'm probably going to use this on something else. I went to so a total of 1500. Okay. Um, I've been following Jay since 2018. I used to get on the talks or talks every time I got the opportunity. I wasn't even aware of the April 2nd, um, meeting even though i'm part of the tulsa um email uh server i didn't right. get an email or any type of notification the reason why i even became aware of the tulsa fallout was because a friend of mine um asked me what was going on with the tulsa fund and they were never too keen on me investing and then because of that it led me to julian and um his message and uh, and then because I follow you, um, I got a uh, message. But I invested because I realized that as a as a community, it's very important for us to invest. Other communities come together and invest in each other. Um, yes, was it emotional? Yes, it was emotional. But I entrusted him to say, hey, look, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to become rich. I wasn't looking to become a millionaire. I was looking for something that would outlast me so those behind me can see that we as a people did something together. Okay, okay. Unfortunately. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. And I, I appreciate you being honest and I really appreciate you coming up here. So I'm not asking you this because I'm trying to come down on you. So I don't want you to take it the wrong way. Okay. Right. Because I know you don't know me. And so mm -hmm. sometimes the way in which I phrase things can can kind of seem uh, confrontational. But the question I want to ask you, because oh, sure. I understand you invested and you kind of explain your rationale. My question I would ask is that do you have a process to evaluate an investment? No, I don't. Okay. So then that answers the question that I was going to ask you of what the process would be. So do you think now that you'll develop a process to evaluate an investment or are you just done investing? Um, it's on pause for me right now. I do okay. a lot of, um, since the Tulsa real estate thing, I've done crowdfunding with like WeFunder and um, what's that thing called? Republic. Yes, ma'am. You know, a little hundred dollars there, fifty dollars there. So I do a lot of those little crowdfundings for hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. So I do that. But something on this level for our community, it definitely I'll have to have some level of evaluation next time. Um, luckily for me, you know, it was only fifteen hundred dollars. It's been again, it's been like four years. I haven't seen the money in four years. So I mean. 
Okay. You so, know, luckily so, it wasn't so, detrimental to me. Okay. But I'm I feel sorry because people were using their tax returns. So I yep. feel bad because this could have this could have been something that could have raised our raised our esteem as a people to move forward. And he took advantage of us. You're right, you're right. But so it was so let me ask you a question. Was his his pitch that compelling to you to where you overlooked lack of experience, yada, 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 like his, cause I saw the pitch. It was a good pitch. You know, I come out of marketing. So it wasn't a bad, it was a great pitch really, but was a pitch. It wasn't enough for me to pay the guy, but was the pitch to you so oh. good to where you just overlooked everything else and said, Hey, I just give him the money. Uh, basically. Yeah. Because again, okay. I, I'm not, a, uh, I am not versed in investing such as yourself and others. Yes, ma'am. Um, also, because other people were supporting him because he was on Earn Your Leisure. He was on other podcasts where they are a little more privy to investment um, information. So I assumed it would be at least OK. Um, again, I didn't go crazy and started investing like over, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. But I said, at least with this is a good seed, you know, a good seed to see where, where he takes it. Understand, understand. Or where he could take it. Understand. Yeah. And, and and that was very powerful what he did. He was able to leverage his relationships to get um, mm -hmm. more exposure on platforms that already had credibility. And so I understand mm -hmm. why he he did that. And he had been building this up for a long because I've, I've known who Jay Morrison was for like almost a decade. He used to be on World Star Hip Hop. Wow. Yeah. He'd been around a minute. Right. Um, So I knew who he was. I remember he was on the, the Breakfast Club because he was supposed to be Angela Yee's real estate guy you know i know he had to work for sotheby's at one time i don't know how much property he ever moved for sotheby's that was a question um so i knew who he was so i just think he refined his pitch and he was at the right place at the right time and he he was able to get the right vehicle which is very very powerful i just think it's very unfortunate but i don't down talk you for investing because you explain what you were trying to do and i just think it's unfortunate the way you were trying to think long term and think bigger and I don't think he necessarily had that same type of perspective on what he was doing. But yeah, but he also invoked Marcus Garvey. You can't just say Marcus Garvey. Um, you know, he wanted to remember Marcus Garvey wanted to invest in a um in a ship and it was yes, sabotaged. You know, actually a hundred years later, and a hundred years later from the Tulsa fund. So I I'm invest I'm investing in our history. I'm investing. But after 100 years later, we're still resilient. We still see a future for ourselves. Let's do this other community. Because I've worked with people of the, um, I don't want I don't, I don't to get your, with the, the Jays. The Young Jays. Fan. I don't want your, your show to get centered. And they invest. They had no problems dropping $20,000, $10,000 on certain um, um, community projects and have no information. You're right. You're right. But there's so, a. You're hundred percent correct, but they're they're you you hundred percent correct. But I just think they have already developed the right people for that. Because let me help you to something. There's black people okay. doing crowdfunding all the time for real estate. They're just not as high profile as Jay Morrison because they're not on social media. So I just think what I don't want the the situation to be colored by him to think that like all crowdfunding for real estate done with black people is negative. This goes on all the time before Jay and after Jay. Jay was just really able to leverage social to build out his fund. But there's black people doing this all the time. I just posted on my community wall. There's a black group that have bought a hotel, uh, I think, in Lake Charles. And now they're getting ready to buy another hotel. So they, black people have been doing this for a very long time. It's just that none of them were able to leverage social the way Jay was. But I don't want it to make it seem like we can't do this because he messed up. Right. This got nothing like so I just want to really make sure people understand that. OK. And my next question is. Yes, ma'am. Um, Based on what he's doing, what is he going to go to jail or what will be the consequence or possible consequence? I know you're not an attorney, but. Well, what did he do that was illegal? OK. So that's the question. I mean, he'll go to jail if he did something illegal, potentially. I just don't understand what he did that was illegal. Because I read the documents. In fact, I read them multiple times. I read his SEC filings. Um, I just don't understand what he did that could be perceived as some type of securities fraud or illegal. Not saying that he didn't. I just don't see it in the document. And my question to, to Mr. Uh, Gordon is that, from my understanding that he's a little bit more financially well-off than the average person, 
why don't he sit down with some attorneys that are experts in that space and figure out what they believe he did that was illegal and then pursue that as opposed to going to, to working class people and getting them caught up in this situation because they got enough to worry about. Fair point. And I'm not, and I'm not going to uh, post my picture or anything because uh, again, I, and this to me, to me talking to you right now is my therapeutic um, emotional release right now. I'm not making no video. I'm here talking with you, getting a better understanding, getting a level of insurance from talking to you. And as you explain it for me, this is enough for me to post my picture up personally. For me, it doesn't do anything, but it just expose me more. So I'm not interested in doing it. But I've I've, I've seen people in chat groups say things. So I understand. But, and I um, mean, I respect you coming up here, and because I I've never spoken. I think I knew one other person that invested in the fund. But I respect mm -hmm. you coming up here and telling us like what was the rationale behind it. Well, let me explain something to you that I learned from sales. You are like 100 percent of the people inside the world. The number one reason why people buy anything is emotional. There is not a logical reason why people buy. So you haven't done anything that 100 percent of the people in the world are going to do is that you purchase something for an emotional reason. All sales is emotional. There is no logical sales. So don't think that you did something negative. You did what everybody else in the world has done is you bought something because of how you thought it was going to make you feel. So, so moving forward, uh, Mr. Mr. So, so moving forward, because I'm not an accredited investor because I don't have the income. Will there be? I'm not sure what the black we as a black community are we how we're going to move forward from this. You know, I saw JT the pocket that sent me some clips what he said the other day. Um, I saw the Julian Gordon. You know, I just hope we can repair from this. Well, we can because what, what I'm trying to help you understand is that black people are investing all the time outside mm -hmm. of Jay Morrison. It's just in this social space, in this YouTube space, he was very high profile. But there's also a lot of black people that have no idea who Jay Morrison is. Just like I know black people that had no idea who. Oh, yeah, yes, was. yes. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what mm -hmm. I want. So mm -hmm. there's nothing. He's not going to stop anything because people were doing stuff before him. And they just going to keep doing what they was doing before Jay Morrison ever showed up. So he don't stop nothing. You know, so I just want people to understand that is that um, in this Internet thing, these people are like front and center. But back in the real world, most people don't even know who these folks are and they don't care to know. They doing what they doing and they looking at yields and they trying to get a returns for their investors. And they don't have time to be worried about like. You know, some guy that didn't run his fund properly, yada, yada, yada. So I don't think the black community is going to be impacted by Jay at all, because I can show you websites in which black people are trying to do crowdfunding to raise money for projects. Okay. So it's just. And, and is, my next question. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. So my next question is. um, If he, if it goes through banks, again, I'm not sophisticated. And if it's anything above, you know, above what you can share, please let me know. And the, if the fund goes bankrupt, so Tulsa goes totally under. Mm -hmm. Is that what Because I didn't see the April 2nd. April 2nd one is something I've, I've heard on online grapevine. I didn't even see the video. I don't even know where to even get access to the video of the April 2nd um, discussion. So did you, you see it or can you, what did he exactly share? So from my understanding is that um, the fund is going to be insolvent. So this is something that we talked uh, that kind of came out maybe honestly six months to a year ago. It's based on the the yeah, operating, you didn't mention it. Mm -hmm. yeah, the operating expenses that are taking place in the fund and the money that was still left in the fund. The fund was going to go to zero anyway. So what he's looking at now, from my understanding, is that he posed to the people on the live stream is that maybe I should just liquidate the rest of the fund because there's not enough money in it to manage operations. Right. So essentially it's over with all the money. And I, and I did this on my original video. I said, he's going to continue to draw money out of this fund to zero. And that's kind of what he did is he, the way he had this structured, he could continue to use the fund as a piggy bank until there was no money left in the fund. And so essentially that's what he did, but he's not the first or the last person to do something like this. So I just think that's the issue is that the fund has very little assets to speak of. All the money came out for some type of operations 
which I'm not sure what they were, but they cost money. So that's why the capital of the fund was continuing to get withdrawn. So I think the fund is going to be insolvent so my, or, or bankrupt, however you want to use the terms. So my question, will they be able to at least save the Legacy Center? No, they're selling the Legacy Center. That's all for sale. Oh so the my Legacy God. Center was bought okay. with money out of the fund, cash. I heard he refied it. He yeah, so got all money out of that. It was a smart, okay, smart, smart play. Then now I heard they put the, the Legacy Center up for sale. I don't know what they're going to be to sell it for because this is not a great market for commercial real estate. Wow. So then the question is that if they sell it, where was where will those funds go? Will they be distributed back to investors? Because my biggest challenge with the fund, was, and this is part of real estate, like I say, real estate is illiquid for the most part. And I don't think that the people that invested in it kind of realized that. And so when you put money into a real estate fund, I'm not sure that people should look for any short term result. Right. Because real estate, by definition, is illiquid compared to like equities or bonds. Right. So when I looked at the fund, it was he initially said it's going to be a 12 month hold before you get any money back from the fund. And then the dividends are going to be. I don't know if this particular term were optional based on the capital still inside the fund. So when he was talking about you get 8% preferred dividend, but really he could pay it or not pay it based on how he felt the capital, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, level was in the fund at that particular time. So you may never get a dividend for being in the fund. So now all you have is your equity position in the fund based on what assets they own. What we saw over time is that he was accumulating very little assets. It was just a lot of operating expenses. So I think that was the biggest opinion. That was my biggest challenge was that the way the deal was structured. I wasn't a fan of it, but it doesn't mean it's not a good deal because I'm not a fan of it. It just don't work for me. But most real estate funds are going to be a long term play. Because it's real estate. I think these little cable television shows have gotten people to think like real estate is a 45 day turnaround. That's not really how real estate works from my experience. They're more longer term plays in which you actually got to put a lot of work into it and hope that it works out after a certain amount of time. You can now exit this particular deal. But that has to be based on the structure of the deal from the onset. It, it won't turn into something later down the road if it wasn't that from the gate. OK. Yes, ma'am. All right. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm here. Um, I, you know, just, you know, hurt a little bit, but we got to move forward. You know, and I appreciate <laughs> it. And you didn't you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, things happen in investing. You could have invested in a Fortune 500 company and the same, you can get the same result. Right. Yeah. So things happen. Right. I was I traded a company on Thursday uh, and that company lost. I want to say 12, 14 years of value in one day. Whoa. Lost mm. 50%. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So these things happen in the markets. You have to know what you're involved in and you have to have the emotional fortitude to understand that everything's not going to go right. Let me explain something to you before we get off, but it's really going to be for the audience. Investing is portfolio based. Something that Miss Erica Williams talks about and she's 100% correct is that you can't be in like one deal and think that one deal is going to blow up. And I'm talking about you personally, I'm just saying in general. So when we're building out a, a portfolio, we put money in different things because some of those things are not going to work anyway, just for whatever reason, reasons outside of our control. But you're so spread around that the things that do work, you can ride those to the top. So you lost 1500 on this deal. Okay, yeah, okay. You learn from it. You now know how to apply that information to the next situation and you just move forward. You see what I'm saying? Because things are going to happen. Because yes, yes. people that bought this particular company, like I said, they lost 14 years of share value in one day. And we'll see if they get it back. My bet is they're not going to get it back because I got put contracts on it. So I'm watching my put contracts appreciate on Thursday because this thing is continuing just to sell off, sell off, sell off, sell off. And so... If you invested in that company 14 years ago, you, you're right back where you started 14 years ago. And that happened in one day. So these things happen in the markets. The only way to avoid it is either by treasuries or by the index. But if you buy individual companies, it's called business risk. 
which creates investing risk. Anything can happen because the way this deal was set up, if Jay got hit by a car, you would have had the same result because his wife sure as hell can't run it. So you got the same result. I remember I remember one time on one of these Tulsa talks, somebody asked, hey, you have me going through so much emotion. Remember, his daughter was sick and all he had yeah. a lot of personal stuff going. Why can't you defer the fund to somebody or hire somebody to come in to manage a fund or hire a board? And all I remember from those conversations, he was just circling around the, the um, question. All he did yeah. was circle around the, the. Understand, but the, the, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, the question is why he didn't have a board from the gate. But that's not a question I'm going to ask Ooh. you. That's a question I would ask Mr. Gordon because you're an experienced real estate investor. So how come you didn't require him to have a board from the gate before you gave him your 40000 Because, again, if Jay was to get hit by a car, now what do you have? Nothing. Because there is no board. So what is the, uh, I forgot a particular plan to where in corporations, if the CEO passes away, they already know who the next person is going to be. They got the same thing in the military. Right? I forgot what that particular, it's like a transition plan. What is that plan for the fund? So th that's the questions. So again, that's why I didn't like how it looked because to me, everything was based around Jay. Jay gets hit by a car, it's over with. So that's why to me, it wasn't, um, the actual setup wasn't good. But you know, that was my personal opinion. It don't mean it wouldn't be good for somebody else. Lesson learned. That's yes, ma'am. So, and I then number two, and then number two, some some big weights with like Boyce Watkins and all those can they be held accountable too? Because they were kind of supporting Jack. No, nah, I mean, what did they do that was illegal? So you can hold them personally accountable, but they didn't do anything illegal. I understand. Yes, ma'am. So they didn't do anything illegal that I know of. But if they did, I guess somebody eventually may come after them. But. You can hold them personally accountable, but this is why I'm an advocate for people learning this stuff on their own. You don't need a PhD to understand how to invest. That's false. Right. You don't have to be an accountant. You don't have to be a CPA. You don't have to be a CFP. They're supposed to be uh, uh, counselors on your team, but it shouldn't be a scenario to where all the information is on their side and you don't know anything. It's not like the medical space. And even with the medical space, people are learning more and more about their health. I'm not a fan of that type of business model, but it takes the person having the time, one, and then two, the desire to learn and get a basic understanding about these particular situations. Because it don't matter what Boyce Watkins say to me about a stock. I know how to evaluate a stock on my own. I don't need Boyce. And that's no disrespect to him and his education. I just don't need him because I know how to look at stocks on my own. So I don't need a PhD to tell me what to buy. And also one more thing, if I'm mad, uh, Mr. Mr. Dave. Yes, ma'am. Um, you're right. I'm also hearing whispers online about Jordan maybe doing something. Jordan, um, the gentleman who blew the whistle, I guess. Um, is that for? Is that has that been confirmed or not? I'm not sure if you want to talk about it or not. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I've heard. I'm not sure because you know. Okay. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know That's him. All. Yeah, I wouldn't know. So I don't know him. I never heard nothing negative about the dude. To be real with you, so I wouldn't know. So I, I did. I, I gave okay. some critiques of what he was saying, but yeah, I wouldn't know. Okay. All right. So I appreciate it. Right. And like okay. I say, just want to continue. Thank to you for having you. me on. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Talk to you Thank later. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. All right. No bye-bye. Okay. We got anybody else let me know. I'm going to read some of these super chats. So Terrence, man, appreciate the 1999 super chat. Mr. Johnson, man, appreciate the 499. Mr. Cedric Webb, I appreciate the $5. Amika, for the type of deal, which is an SEC regulated security, which is not an SEC regulated security. They should have done their homework if the deal was structured as an LTD partnership where investors have more oversight over the lead on the first deal. I don't know if you can do crowdfundings like that. Mr. Pascal, appreciate the 499. Roscoe, what do you think young Malcolm's next venture would be? The best that could come from this is invest if people educate themselves before making an investment. I have no idea. And it don't really matter. What matters is that these questions are right here. No disrespect to you, Roscoe, but I don't think what he's next going to do next is important. I think what is important to people is that what did they learn from the situation? Right. That's what's important. And then what is impact how you invest in the future? Yes or no. I think those are most important. What that guy does next to me doesn't really matter um, because it won't impact my portfolio on any level. What's going on? You can hear me. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? 
Yes, sir. So I had one thing and some background information. I knew about Jay uh, like when I graduated college around 2016. Okay. <laughs> because he actually had really good information when it came to getting into investments. Even if you looked at his corner classes for his real estate, he gave accurate information because uh, I would research the stuff he was saying. Because um, just for me being a fan of history, you always try to get more than one source to confirm if something's true or not. So I would research it on bigger pockets, research from different people doing real estate and all the stuff was like legitimate that he was saying. Okay. And it helped me get my first duplex when he started talking about house hacking and stuff like that. And I bought some of his classes and his book and stuff. So I was like, he has a background in real estate. It doesn't matter that he used to be a, a drug dealer and stuff like that. I know people are now using that to say you should never invest with him. But he actually provided good information to the people. And we did a corner class, as you could say, that was marketing, but that was still free education on the street corner for a lot of people who may not even use the information. Yeah. So the thing that gets me is, all right, so Jay put this out. And not only did Jay do a lot of marketing, but he also did a lot of like Tulsa real estate calls. He had the documentation where you can go read the documentation. A lot of stuff he said on the calls were from the documentation saying how things was going to go. And I was sitting those calls and listen, a lot of people wouldn't call in or ask any questions. A lot of people would just go along, but they, it seemed like they got so caught up in the um, Tulsa real estate, the Marcus Garvey. And one thing that's interesting is when you look at Marcus Garvey and you look at the documentary of his children and stuff, a lot of investments he did uh, with that money weren't successful. They were like bad investments and stuff, but people got caught up into the program. So with this, I was like, I, I pretty much felt like donating your money to this was like a, a do it was a donation. Cause if you looked at the return, it wasn't really, even though it's an eight percent preferred return, we look at preferred return, it isn't guaranteed that you would get it. Um eight percent on five hundred dollars isn't that much money. And then when you looked at the deal, I was looking at the same thing. I was like, everything depends on Jay. So if, if Jay has a heart attack, like what what happens? And the other thing that got me about this is you had people who on YouTube were saying they they knew about business, whether it was a doctor, whether it was Julian Gordon and stuff like this, that said, oh, we know about business. We need black people to invest. But when you actually listen to them about why they was investing, it was never like numbers. It was never like documentation or projections and stuff like that. Like Julian Gordon, the reason he said he invested $10,000, he said, Jay Morrison been to jail before. So I know he don't want to go to jail again. I'm like, there's people that commit crimes over and over and over again and go to jail. That's not a good reason to invest in the fund. So the big question I have is, in my opinion, I never liked the idea of being an accredited investor because unless you got, I was it 200, a net worth of two, uh, you make an income of $250,000 or have a certain net worth, you're blocked out from certain investments. Yeah. Which I appreciate with this, he did the crowdfund. He kept saying Obama passed laws where you can do crowdfunds to raise money and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, this gives us more opportunity to get in these investments. Cause I feel like a lot of this stuff was to keep certain people out, especially black people from doing larger investments and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, my idea was I don't got $500 right now to just give away. I'm going to wait and see how the first year does. And another thing that was interesting to me is he said, he wasn't going to buy properties and he actually got mad when people kept trying to get him to buy properties. He said he wanted to be a mortgage company. He just wanted to fund people projects, which I said, I don't know how much of a background he has in funding projects. So it just seemed to me that a lot of people just got caught up in the story. And one thing he would do that I guess worked for some people that didn't make sense to me is every call he would talk about how he grew up in a, in a drug use environment and how he was selling drugs and he changed his life. But like people really buy into that. And like some of these people, like if you look at Julian Gordon, the way he presented himself in real estate, he should be able to look at this. Like I'm 24. I'm not no brainiac. And I was like, this seemed like a donation. He should be, he should have been able to say like, Hey, this may not be a good investment, but it, it gets to me of, should we like, if you raise money and you do this stuff, should you keep out people that aren't accredited investors or should you keep out people without a certain understanding? Cause the way my mind works is if I tell people, Hey, I want to be a professional boxer tomorrow. 
if they accept that and I go and I get beat down, I can't get mad at the 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 boxing organization because I got beat down. I said I want to do it. So if you say you want to put your money in this and you have um total rational thinking and you can make decisions, at the end of the day, you you can only really get mad at yourself. But it's it's turning from everything but that of saying you need to understand investing, you need to understand what you're putting your money in, you need to be able to vet investments to well jay morrison need to go to jail and like you said from what i could tell he didn't do anything illegal and the way he went about putting this together with paying all that money for the sec filing and stuff like that and being in prison before he probably made sure he didn't do anything to be illegal so do you think like this should this how, how this should work for people that aren't investment savvy should you just not take their money at all because i'm like the same thing you said beyond me done crashed and went to zero but i can't well maybe twenty dollars i can't go and say the ceo will beyond me scam me up my money if i invested in it yeah i mean it's it's that's a, that's that's a very uh i don't i don't know how to say the particular word that's a very good question because there is a group of people inside the united states that don't believe that people that are not at a certain level of wealth and income should be allowed to invest past anything except maybe a mutual fund or a 401k yes yeah, they believe that they're so unsophisticated they're kind of open to a lot of uh, risk because of their lack of understanding of the situation. There's another group of people that believe that, hey, if you want to invest in it, you should be allowed to do it. Because, again, you talked about us not having access to certain vehicles don't allow us to do certain things because we live in a world to where if you already have money, it's easier for you to make money. Yes, sir. But the only reason why we don't have money is because we was locked out of a lot of spaces for literally four or 500 years and they didn't allow us. And if we did make it, they took it from us and we didn't have any recourse in law. So now we don't have it to put it into certain situations. Cause once you get a certain amount of money in this country, you should never go broke. Exactly. Because you can keep making your money, make money for you. And you just live off your, your actual return on your investments and you don't have to touch your principal ever again. But the problem is getting to that. And then we know that wealth in this country is made in groups. It's not made in individual people. So we know that we're going to have to do group oriented stuff to get to where we want to go. But I think this is the issue. And we know this because we look at the markets all the time. A lot of the focus is being put on Jay. Jay's one out of 100,000 people that manage funds. So the problem is that all the focus is being put on him. And we're not putting the focus on people that are doing this the right way and don't have these issues. They should be getting the attention. The reason why I think these other people, and I don't want to say their name because I don't want to get caught up in saying that they did this, but my own opinion is that Jay got so much momentum on the internet. That's something we have in the social media space. And this is why I got a lot of respect for Erica and I got a lot of respect for by the hood is that let's say drop 16, you start buzzing online. You will get a lot of people that's going to jump on your penis, bro, because you buzzing online that you ain't know three days ago. And it don't matter what you got going on. They just want to ride the wave. So Jay has such a strong wave. I think people just wanted to get on that wave because Gordon didn't give him 10,000, gave him 40K. Okay. So you would think Gordon, with his experience, would have a very rigorous evaluation of where to put his 40K at. And that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm, but I'm saying. But the wave was that strong, bro. And it, it, don't, it don't make sense to me. So and I'm like, the people. It, it, it do make sense if you're trying to ride that wave because he had a wave bigger than all those people. Jay had a wave. You don't, you don't raise that kind of money if you ain't got a wave. Jay had a wave, bro. So I think people want to get on that way because that's what social media a lot of it is about is who got the wave? How can I be around them? They did the same thing with Kevin Samuels. So if you get a wave next week, you're going to have a whole lot of new friends because why? You got a wave. You wave it right now. And people want to get on that wave. They're trying to surf their way into the shore with you. And then when somebody else get a wave, they're going to jump on their team. That's what people do online. So I just think that's why a lot of these people that you think would know better jumped on him because he was wavy. Jay was waving, man. You don't raise. I heard that dude raise like twenty seven million dollars. Yeah, Jay was waving, man. And that's and my, that's why EYL, all the people jumped on this team. And my thing is, in my opinion, right? We talk about fund managers. The goal of a fund manager is to raise as much money as possible. So he did what he was supposed to do. Exactly. And at the time of doing it, the people who who like Julian Gordon, it's not just him. You got Boyce Watkins. You got I ain't gonna say all the names. None of these people came and said, "Wait, wait, Jay." We shouldn't do it that way. Oh, wait, guys, this is cool, but we should evaluate investments by X, Y, and Z and see if it's a good investment. 
they went into it and said, yeah, we, we, we black wall street, we changing everything. And the first thing that never made sense to me is when he bought the legacy center, I was like, this is a huge liability. Like you just got the fund. I'm pretty sure that caused millions of dollars. Did nobody say, Hey man, like, you know, he had a board, but I'm like, did these people, was it no, did they have no ability to hold him accountable and stuff like that? But I'm just confused on my big thing with this is I know there's other people doing funds, but this was public. And I believe he raised $13 million, which in the grand scheme of things, isn't that much. But from what I've seen with black people raising, it's a lot of money. And if it had worked out, there could have been more and more funds. You could have had more and more pool definitely in Atlanta and stuff like that and encourage more people to do this stuff. But my thing is, what's the mission with this? Is the mission for people to become a better investor, which is more of what your message is. So even when I taught my little class on options trading, I keep telling people, don't ask me about the company. Do your analysis first and then have a conversation. Exactly. Or is the mission just what well, this one didn't work out? But if uh, Joe Blow, who big on the Internet, make a fund, we should invest in it because that's supporting the black community. But then when it doesn't work out, the best you can tell these people is make a video and send it to the D.A. complaining. It, it depends on what your it depends on what your goal is. My goal is, I think you say the former, not the latter. My goal is the former is the way of people. I inspire people to do the education on their own, because I know that if we just get a baseline of understanding in these areas, people can't come to us with certain stuff. Our biggest issue is we can't have certain conversations so you can say anything to us that we don't know. We can't even discern whether or not you tell us the truth or not. Right. So that's my goal. But that's not everybody's goal. So I'm not going to be able to raise 13 million dollars because I'm not pushing. You know, we going to do this because it's Black Wall Street. I'm not pushing that. That's not my program. So it just depends on the person and what they're trying to do. To me, Jay, I don't think I, I, I'm saying because I don't know Jay personally. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he went in to do what he did. But I think he knew that he was not competent to do what he said he was going to do. And he thought he was going to figure it out within a certain amount of time. And I just think he realized I can't figure this out. And he did not have a board. So there was nobody to make him do and say, hey, well, you know what? We'll get rid of you and bring somebody else in if you don't handle this a certain way, because we got to make sure that we look out for our investors. That type of structure did not exist. So once it started to go downhill, there was nobody to get him out of there. But even with a board, so Facebook got a board. You're not going to get rid of Zuckerberg, bro. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. He's going to get rid of you. So even with a board, sometimes you can't, you're not going to get rid of Elon. So sometimes even with a board, you can't do nothing based on how it's set up. Zuckerberg has Facebook set up where you cannot get rid of him. He's going to get rid of you first. So as soon as me and you start saying, man, we don't like how Elon running his company and we start kind of voicing that, he's going to get us out of there. Because that's his company. Mm, I agree on you know, charities and stuff. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you got to always understand how these things are set up. So then when you go into it, you know how it's set up. So you're not surprised when things go a certain way that they're going to go. I just said this again. To me, Jay was incompetent in this particular area. He's a hell of a fundraiser. To me, what he should do is the same thing Kathy Wood does. Kathy Wood raises money. She got a bunch of people around her that actually do the operations. She just raises the money. And they have a certain perspective on that fund. And that fund is negative. Nobody's calling her a scammer. But that's exactly. negative over these years. But all she does is she just raises. She's a rainmaker. To me, Jay's a hell of a rainmaker. He can make money just rainmaking. He ain't got to steal money from nobody. But I think we, and that's something I had to work on myself, because sometimes our experiences in life, we don't, we think we got to keep doing certain stuff because we know we can get away with it instead of saying, I ain't going to do that no more. Because Jay, Jay can raise money. So to me, why don't you just raise money and then attach yourself to somebody else and they use you to raise money and you let them run it? But then you won't have the ability to get money out of the fund like that, though. Well, the thing that I wonder is when Jay initially did this, did anybody think it was going to be success successful to partner with him to operate the money? But then I wonder if he really thought he was going to make 13 million. Or he thought it was going to be like maybe one million, stuff like that. Then when it blows up, everybody is either attacking him or supporting him. And like I said, especially when we start talking about doing mortgages, I was like, man, I don't know how this is going to go. So I was like, let me wait a year to see how it's going to go. But a lot of people, in my opinion, 
when he was doing the stuff as far as education had nothing to say he makes the 13 million and he does the fund and then fund don't go out he's a scammer yeah, but yeah. i'm like nobody's thinking okay you may be good doing a hundred thousand dollars managing and you may we know a lot of people can't even manage their household income you. and you turn around you throw someone 13 million dollars and the whole uh black uh well, i guess you wanted i don't know you say dungeon dragons um <laughs> <laughs> but all these people are on your back saying you the best thing since sites bread you know he may would have did better with less money but at 13 million now everybody's going to the black legacy center now everybody wants my uh monument out front to my marcus garvey and all this stuff so it could have just been a lot of pressure but i just don't think it makes sense to throw stones at jay but not talk about these other people that sat here and encouraged you to invest your money and none of these people said we should make sure that people know how to invest their money and read the documentation but that's just my view. but let me explain something to you he raised 13 million to do what he was going to need to do he didn't have to raise way more money than that because he was doing commercial real estate he you know he yeah. never really talked about really doing residential. he said now he wanted to be a a, a lender which means you're going to need way more than 13 million so for him to do what he claimed he was trying to do, he was going to need way more money than 13 million. That's small money in the space he's trying to work in. So he was going to have to keep doing raises because as a fund manager, and you see this with fund managers, they're always talking their book. If you got Kathy Wood, we say, hey, me and you drop 16, we're going to get an interview with Kathy Wood. She's going to talk a book because she's always trying to raise money. That's her job as a manager to bring more money in. So she's always talking her book. I think people got mad at Jay for talking his book. That's his job as a manager of the fund. He's supposed to keep trying to raise money. He should be doing a raise every two years, bring in more money. Bring Now the question is, what is he doing with the money? But he should always be looking to bring in more money. That's his job as a fund manager because the bigger pool of capital he can control, the more he can outlay. So I just think, again, he, he to me, was incompetent in, in, in particular areas. And then he allowed people to invest with him that didn't understand the markets. And so then they put pressure on him to do stuff that really he should not have been doing. And then he also, to me, didn't understand what he should be doing. As a fund manager, you're not supposed to be worrying about Haitians coming over the border in Texas. That's not your issue. Mm -hmm. So he kind of got, again, I don't think he knew how to conduct himself in this particular area because he had never done it before. He came out of Sotheby's. He was doing residential. Yes. He wasn't doing commercial. He never managed pools of capital before. Something I talk about in my class all the time. You have to learn how to manage capital outside of just buying something at the store. So we know that you can give somebody, and I've seen this even myself, you can have $100,000 in your trading account and you'll start doing bad things because you think you got so much money. So imagine if you had $10 million in your trading account, what kind of trades you would take? Because you ain't used to managing 100000 And that's what I'm saying. Like... I, I just don't, I just think there's so many variables that people aren't thinking, but it leaves me. I wonder if if this had been people who invested accredited investors or you know deal syndications where people knew, normally got put twenty thousand up. Yeah. Would the pushback be so strong as people who's putting up a thousand five hundred dollars or something like that? And then it makes me say, because me personally, I never raised no one. I'm just skeptical on raising money, especially because I know how you know some folks are just blaming people. Um, in my experience, black people, but two, should these people even be allowed to invest? Because I want everybody, if you feel like you can put your, I'm one of them people like, everybody should be allowed to invest. But it don't make no sense where you invest and then it don't go well and it's, well, we need to throw the person in jail. That that part don't make sense to me. It's both things, I feel like, and that can't be true, but. Yeah, I agree with you, but you, you got to kind of weigh it out. Which What kind of society do we want to have? Because, again, I don't think, and that we can, I don't know, what kind of society do we want to have? We got to ask ourselves. Do we want a society where people can do what they want to do with their money? Uh, do we want a society where the government restricts what you can do with your money? Do we just got to, do we want to balance it between the two? So we got to kind of ask ourselves that. I just think that Jay could not have gotten financed by people that had experience in the space. If he was to go down to Dallas, Texas or Houston, Texas and try to deal with them people down there that do them big time real estate syndicate, they would not give him any money in my opinion. That's because a good point. His, because of his history and his lack of experience, he don't have a track record. Right? I got somebody, Erica, on, on my plate. She got a track record in business. So if Erica said, hey, we get ready to do one, two, three, she's been there, done that. I, I just, he didn't have a track record in doing what he said he was going to do. So from the onset, like you said, it was a donation. 
Now, he can be very enthusiastic about what he's going to do. And I like that. I appreciate that. I appreciate somebody that got a positive mindset. Because here's something else y'all have seen that, that we got to talk about. When are we going to get into a space where we can give our people money? And if they mess it up, that it just it is what it is. Yeah, that's and what I'm saying. To the next part, because we got to get to that space. Because if you look at uh, the dude that used to run Amazon, Bezos, his parents gave him a quarter million. And then he went to his network and they all gave him $50,000. So his parents had enough money to give him a quarter million for the business. That wasn't a last piece of money they had in the world. So if we don't ever get to a space to where people can fail and it, we don't look to destroy these people just because they fail, we ain't never going to have nothing because a lot of people going to fail in the markets. A lot of people going to fail in business. A lot of people going to fail that stuff. I can say drop 16. Hey, man, I'm going to put you in this position and it don't work out for you. That don't mean I can't say, well, I can't ever put another black man in that position. I mean, I got to get you out of there and put somebody else in there. That's what I'm saying. If you look yeah. at a lot of people's businesses, they say you just keep failing until you get it right. Exactly. Like I've had businesses that fail. Exactly. But see how this go. I was like, I'm definitely if I had the capability, I'm definitely not about to get on the Internet and try to raise that money with y'all. So y'all, if something go wrong, <laughs> y'all over here talking about uh, Vern need to go to jail. Y'all marching outside the building. It just it just turned goofy, in my opinion. But yeah, but that, that was the people that was the people that he raised money with. So he, you just got to understand that he went out to very unsophisticated investors. And I'm not saying all of them. But I just think they don't know. But that's why I'm an advocate of getting people to get to understanding before they get in a position to where they're looking to invest. So when they come in, they have a level of sophistication. So when they sit down with their fund manager, they know how to ask him the right questions. Yes, yeah, sir. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, then you can determine whether or not you want to put money with this guy and you're not pressed um, to put, you know, you're not pressed to get this quick return. You know, because when you put money with Vanguard, Vanguard tells you from the gate, we don't trade the market. So don't call us asking us, did we catch this trade? This is a long-term fund, and that's what it is. So don't call us asking us, you know, what are we doing with your money? This is a long-term fund for a long-term time horizon. So I just think that's the issue is that he was not able to communicate what the time horizon was going to be. But I think if he did, he probably wouldn't have raised as much money. They got they bought into the story, and they bought into wanting to do something, which nothing wrong with that. But I don't think they really understood how, especially real estate, real estate is illiquid. You can't get your money out of real estate. So if you want to get a quick turnaround, you got to buy stocks or bonds or something else, or options or Forex or cryptocurrency. But you start putting your money into physical, physical assets like that. There's a time frame that you got to be willing to invest in to get your money out on the back end. I don't think they realize that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So All right. It is what it is. So I appreciate you coming through, man. I appreciate the conversation. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, man, be easy. Okay, so we got two super chats, Miss Erica. So Erica, classic clown, smart fund money. Appreciate the five dollars. Start at the bank, bank CD, stock accounts, REITs, simple dividends that provide eight to ten percent. Folks got to start with their basics. We made Robin Hood hot, definitely. I agree with you. Jay Moelson started this BK Money Wave. Years later, people still use his name to get traction. Kathy Woods has old scam style too. Appreciate the $5. Yeah, Kathy Woods' fund has been negative, I think, over the past decade. But she 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 talked her book up, and she's still raising money. And she sold NVIDIA early. She messed herself up with that one. She sold NVIDIA, like, I don't know, before the run. She really messed herself up. So now, in Kathy Woods' fund, Tesla's the anchor of her main fund now. So everything's based on Tesla. So she, she put everything... Uh, behind Elon to figure it out. So let's read some of these comments and we're going to get up on out of here. So Geo Boogie says, does he have to liquidate the home his family live in? I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. So simply a diva. So he broke down the SEC file and how the fund would fail. As an attorney, he analyzed the contract. Why not be investors? Would not be investors' favor. Him being an attorney doesn't matter. That's why y'all got got. So Tone is an attorney, most definitely. I don't know if his his uh that was his area of expertise. He did break the fund down, but I wouldn't go to Tone to determine whether or not I should invest in something. 
That's me personally. Got nothing against Tone and his education, right? I would not go to Tone um, to determine whether or not I should invest in a vehicle uh, because I don't know that to be his particular area of law that he practices, even though I could be incorrect, right? Um, but I do remember his videos that he came out and talking about the fund and his attitude was that, you know, he was negative or pessimistic of the fund, but I don't hold any more weight to him because he's an attorney because I know attorneys and they practice in different areas. So I have a trademark attorney. I wouldn't ask her, her opinion of whether or not I should invest in a fund because she specializes in trademarks. Right. Uh, so that's just my perspective of it. So he was correct on this. I didn't like it because of how the deal was set up. But my goal is to get people to where you don't need somebody on YouTube to tell you whether or not you should invest in something. Because what if they're not on YouTube? Then what do you do? I want people to have their own discernment in these particular areas. And then they can get with somebody else and have a discussion about it. Right. But big up to him and what he do. Eric said he could have built one house with 200K and folks would have chilled out. He wasn't trying to build nothing. Yeah, I feel you. It was very unusual, but you know, it is what it is, right? I think it was a big opportunity that he had um, that he dropped the ball on. Um, but it is what it is. He got his 27 acres, so he got something out of it. Miss Katrina, part of the process is reading the documents, most definitely. So Ms. Cherie says, Chris Senegal has a real estate uh, investing, a real estate crowdfund deal. And as far as I know, it's positive. I heard of him too. I heard he's doing real good stuff out there in Texas. So Ms. Cherie says, anybody too flashy on social is immediate no for me. I feel you. But sometimes that's how you got to get people attention. You know, some people like that flash, you know? So, you know, it's just, it depends on the person. So KM90, he played into the emotional folks as an example of how emotional we are. Uh, KM90, if you ever go work in sales and you actually want to be successful, uh, the first thing you got to understand is that every, every buying behavior is emotional. Everyone. So the reason why inside wherever you live, your residence, that there's consumer products in your residence is because of emotion. Right? So everybody's emotional. Right. There's no such thing as a person that doesn't have emotions and they say like maybe like a sociopath. And that would be a very small minority population. It's emotion to think you're not emotional. That's emotion. Right. But if you ever want to make it in sales, you got to realize the no one reason why somebody's going to buy is because of emotion. Then they turn around and they justify it later, which is still emotion again. Nobody buys for a logical reason. If that was the case. Nobody would buy million dollar cars. Yeah, succession planning. That's what I meant. So there was no succession planning in the fund. So if Jay was to get hit by a car, what do we do next? And all our money's tied up in this fund. So Ms. Duke says there could be an investigation done by the SEC if someone brings it to the attention. I agree. Then what happens after that? Because the SEC has to find that there's some level of security fraud taking place. Uh, where's the security fraud at? You know, so that's the thing is that what did he do that is illegal or would, you know, be some level of security fraud or he misrepresented, you know, what he was going to do to the investors 
Like, where is that at? I'm not saying it's not there. I'm just saying, where is it at? So Miss Katrina says, I already know to listen to my husband when he says he wasn't investing. I feel you. So Miss Avis says her friend can usually use her 5K now. I told her to pull up at the black house and see if we'll speak to her privately. I feel you. So Miss Williams, big up to Brandon Williams at Williams at ACC Tax. Aren't fund managers supposed to have a Series 7 license? This is crowdfunding. It is crowdfunding, but we're just calling him a fund manager. But it is it is listed as a crowdfund. But we're just calling him a, a fund manager, right? But Miss Miss Williams, I don't think he needs a Series 7. Does he need a Series 7 to raise money? I may, I'm, I don't know. Does he need a Series 7 to raise money and let somebody else operate the fund? And I may be incorrect. He may need a Series 7 to raise money. But it was a crowdfund. 100% correct. That's how it is uh, structured. Because I had somebody call it a REIT. I had to get them off the uh, the channel because I was like, bro, that's not a REIT. Erica says, I'm sorry, Katrina says, Erica be telling us telling us every step, people still be skipping skeptics and mad at the results. Most definitely. That's why you got to watch what you tell people because they'll do what they want to do and blame you for it. So that's why you got to watch what you tell folks. You can give them the steps. So GC says, they look at the investment like it's more likely going to fail. That's why VCs invest in so many companies because they know most of them not going to make no money. Definitely. Uh, it's, it's a portfolio. Right? So people that are buying the index, you're buying 500 companies. So it's the top companies that are really driving the return on the on the index. Right. So, you know, if you're looking at the index, the index is weighted towards like seven to 10 companies, but you're in 500 companies. So I just think this singular deal like this one deal is going to change everything. It don't really work that way in investing. But, you know, you got to live and learn. So Miss Williams says. I guess investing other people's money sounds like trading to me. I mean, it's big. You know, people, I think the Saudis fund is like one of the biggest funds in the world. Um, I think the government pension fund is like massive. It's in the trillions. Like there's so much capital in the world that is looking for returns. There's more capital in the world than places to get a return. And those people do not want their money on the sideline. They want to put their money somewhere. You know, if you can get returns in real estate, you can always make money because there's so many people looking to get some kind of return on their money. You just got to get a track record and you'll, you'll, you will make money. It's too many people doing, especially in the United States. So Eric says he already audited him and found no wrong. Definitely. Yeah, I don't think there's anything illegal there. It could be. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I don't think there's anything illegal there. Okay, so again, we're going to go back to the questions for anybody that actually watched the whole video. Question, what do you learn from the situation? And what does impact how you invest in the future? And so this situation is bigger than Jay um, because he's not the only person. Corporate, appreciate the 199 Super Chat. 
he's not the only person running a fund. There's literally thousands of them. I can show you right now a black run investing in business funds right now, right? He's not the only one. He just was really, really high profile. And he was something that really was big on the internet that a lot of people could jump onto and use to get traction and use to get traffic to that particular channel. I've used it myself, right? Um, but I never had an issue with Jay personally because in my mind, he disclosed everything that he was going to do. So before somebody ever said that he was mismanaging the money, I didn't like how the fund was set up from the gate, right? So that was my issue. I didn't like how the fund was set up from the gate. And so it didn't allow me to put money into the fund. And I think that's something that a lot of people really want to kind of ask themselves is what did they read about the fund? But I see the same thing all over the place. I know people that have invested in Tesla and you can't tell them anything negative about Tesla. They don't want to hear it. And so I think that's something that people really want to ask themselves is how do they evaluate any investment? Do they just go with what the person says and it looks good or do they actually have a, a process in which they look at this and if it makes sense, they put money into it. And if it don't make sense, they don't put money into it. That's the question they want to kind of ask themselves. So hope you all have a good evening. Talk to you later. Be safe. Be easy.